Uh, hello, welcome to an unboxing first impressions from, uh, wait, from me, Aziza, Gourmet Pens, by me. Hmm, not sure how I should word that. This is a pen that I have recently received, like a couple days ago. This was sent for me on loan from Applebaum, and it is absolutely fascinating. It is this pen. What's this? Oh, it's this pen. Oh, what's the... Wait, it's upside down. Oh, what's this? Now, this is a solid box. It's got stuff in it. The pen is in here. Not in here, but the pen comes in here. Um, it comes with a warranty card, and it comes with the ID card for the pen. Here are the details. Maybe you could figure it out. <clears throat> Fountain pen. Palladium plated. It has a serial number, which is 90 out of 388. Yes, it is limited. It has a double reservoir power filling system, and that's all I'm going to tell you until I show you the pen. Crazy packaging. I don't really like giant packaging, but this is very attractive, so I will say that. Now, the pen is this. Ooh. This is the Visconti Torpedo Fountain Pen. Okay, so I've got some details on the pen. Let me whip through it with you. This is about, depending on where you purchase it and uh, if you're looking at VAT or not, you're looking at around 1300 to 1400 euros. So it's not an inexpensive pen. Limited edition of 388 pieces. The body is made of carbon fiber. The metal overlay is, um, I just wanna make sure I get it right, palladium plated. And so is the, like the trim, the clip, etc. Um, the interesting thing is, it does have an ink window, it has a metal section, and the ink window is clear, so let me see if I can... I'll show you more when we tilt down for a writing sample. The nib is interesting, it is the Visconti tubular nib, and it is called the skeleton, so it has some cutouts on it. I'll give you a detail, give you some details in that, on that in just a second. Um, okay, so this is... A very peculiar pen. When I first saw pictures of it, I was like, ew, that's really weird. And I thought it would be really heavy, really uncomfortable, but because it's carbon fiber and it's got just a little bit of metal on it, it's actually surprisingly comfortable. I'm not crazy about the section, it gets a bit greasy, but I really like the ink window. I love, there's actually two ink windows. There's one in the barrel and an actual ink window. Really comfortable, really well balanced for me. It's actually balanced towards the center and it's just like strangely enjoyable. Now it's a bit on the expensive side for what my writing tastes are, and I think it's too big for me to use regularly, but it's really neat. And one thing I did notice is that the finishing is really much better than I have seen in the past from Visconti. And I speak from experience because I have purchased Visconti's in the past where the enamel on the clip has just fallen out. Um, where it didn't write, where the, well, this one doesn't have the my pen system, but where the magnet just fell out. So my expectations of a lot of Visconti pens are a bit low. Like, I know they're going to be pretty. If it writes, it's going to be very nice, but something might fall apart. This one looks really good. So I'm just, I'm, I'm positive and pleased about that, especially considering the price. Now, this pen made some notes again, as I said. Inspired by the recent design trend, Bolidismo, uh, the values of this trend are dynamism of shapes and uh, it references design, comic strips, and the time era, like the period of the 30s. The torpedo name alludes to the model of the car that was in use from the beginning of the last century up to the 30s, which featured a like sleek and sporty shape. You can kind of see it here. And, uh, of course, a torpedo, which is a shape designed for the need for speed. We have the need for speed! Okay. I had a lot of caffeine today. So, this pen by Visconti combines skeleton processing and the transparency of demo models. So they have done that well. I don't know, it's kind of a neat pen. The nib, so as I said, it is a skeleton nib. It is based on a high-performance tubular nib design. This is where I get a bit lost. They say the special design and skeleton cut. There's the skeleton cut on the side. 
Um, it is designed this way to make the nib look both vintage and modern. I, I don't know, what do you think of that? I don't know how this looks vintage. Maybe it's because of the, like, the Waverly style tip. I don't know. But, like, I, I never know about the marketing aspect of it. I'm like, mm, does that really make sense? Like, I don't see a vintage look to it. It's a very modern look. It's very unlike the typical fountain pen nib. So in that regard, I can see the modern side. But uh, anyway, just thought I would show this to you, give you a quick look. Let us take a look at how it writes because the nib is pretty nifty. It's, it's interesting. It is a steel nib, but it is interesting. And the only reason I say that in that tone is because it's a steel nib and it's a 1300 euro pen. So it's kind of like, that's weird. But let's take a look, see how it writes. And that's all, see if you guys like it. Okay, bye. Okay, here we have the very interesting Visconti Torpedo. There's quite a bit going on here. Um, this is a limited edition, number 90 of 388. There's the engraving. There's a lot of detail. It's got an enamel, hand enameled clip. Um, it has the double reservoir power filling system. So you can, there's ink in the ink window right now. You can empty that. So if you want to fly with it, it's really nice. There's the clear ink window here. You can see the mechanism a little. So the barrel and the um, cap is carbon fiber. This is palladium plated metal overlay, not too heavy. It's, it's sparse enough that it's not too heavy. And the carbon fiber is quite light. Metal section, not everybody likes that. I, I don't really like this blob, like the bulb at the end, but um, it's a little, it gets a little greasy, but it's not terrible, I've used worse. The clip is, I mean, sorry, the clip, the, the cap is quite large. It's got the same kind of clip style, but overall, like it looks pretty good. I think it's, it's, it's weird. It, I thought it would be really hideous in pictures. Like I thought, oh, that's weird. And then it arrived, it feels really good. Like it looks pretty nifty. So I don't know, I'm, uh, I'm enjoying it more than I expected I would. The nib is the chromium skeleton nib, which is a bit, like, I don't know, it's kind of kind of weird. So the tip turns up a little and you can see that they have cutouts on the side. They say this is supposed to give it a vintage and modern look. I don't see the vintage. I do see the modern. It's It feels a bit like cheap to me because it's a steel nib on a 1300 euro pen and all it has for an engraving is a laser engraved V. So that's kind of minimal. And the nib size, of course. So let's just do a writing sample. Sorry about my previous writing. It's just that I don't want to waste all my paper. It's a little skippy. Pretty wet writer. I'm just going to open the the valve. Um, so it hard starts just a little bit. With the valve open, it's uh, quite wet, but it's quite a bit of hard starting. Now, if you hold it a little higher, it's probably going to perform a little better. It's a little better. Now, it is a firm nib. <laughs> I'm sorry, not a fur. It's it's a what am I saying? I mean, it is a steel nib. It's not a flex nib, but you can get a little bit of line variation. Now this is smooth paper, but I do think that this is just a bit skippy, and at this price, it shouldn't be. The problem is, once it's writing, it's really pleasant. It's quite smooth. I actually enjoy writing with it. If you're writing on toothier paper, it performs a bit better. writing there. 
The thing is just a bit too much skipping, I think. So there you go. Hopefully this was useful. I just wanted to give you a look at it. I think it's a really nifty pen. It's definitely on the pricey side. I mean, Visconti doesn't really make inexpensive special edition pens like this, like limited edition pens. It is quite limited. I think like 388 is not a huge amount. It is pretty nifty. There's a lot going on, but it's got a steel nib with a laser engraving and it's not a flawless performer. So there you go. That is my assessment of the pen. Thank you to Applebaum for loaning me this pen to share with you. I hope you found this useful. If you did, I would love it if you would like and subscribe. Check out some old videos, see if there's anything in there that's of interest to you. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon as Gourmet Pens. All right, everybody, take care. We will see you next time. Bye-bye.